It's truly a pleasure to welcome my first guest to this program. He is currently co-starring with Clint Eastwood in a film called City Heat. Please welcome Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Hi, Burt. Nice to meet you. How are you, sir? Nice to see you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. What do you think? The audience loves you. That makes you feel great, doesn't it? It makes me feel wanted. Yeah. <laughs> How long ago did you actually live in New York City? I lived here, uh, I came here in 1957, 56. And uh, I was here about two years, but I didn't live here. I just, <laughs> what, what just kind of, I just kind of existed on pigeons whenever I could grab one. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ripped the head off one and yeah. just uh, set it. Uh -huh. uh, I, I lived with Rip Torn, mm -hmm. which is a strange existence in its own right. Yeah. <laughs> was, was, this, uh, was this fun at all, or was it just overwhelmingly peculiar? It was, it was both, which has been the story of my life. Yeah. <laughs> overwhelmingly peculiar and fun. <laughs> uh, we had, uh, I was going to uh, acting schools, uh, which I got uh, kicked out of most of. I went to the- Why would uh, they kick you out of an acting school? Because I couldn't act. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, I said, hey, ask a dumb question like that, you're gonna get an answer like that. And then I went to uh, Stella Adler. She was terrific. Mm -hmm. I liked her a lot. And you just kind of sit on the floor and stare at her knees. She praises you a lot. Yeah. But I never acted. Yeah. Uh, then I finally ended up with uh, Wynn Hanman, who was wonderful. He was very kind. And I was, I was real, real shy in those days. And uh, I was. <laughs> I was real shy. And uh, um, in my class, which is kind of uh, astounding, really, was um, Carol Lawrence, who nobody knew, uh, Red Buttons. Jan Murray, who was doing a uh, uh, treasure hunt show. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wanted to be an actor. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the treasure girl, please. And say, that's not in the scene, Jane. And, then, never mind. <laughs> and, uh, and Frank, Frank Gifford, who was playing for the Giants at the right. time and was gorgeous. Yeah. I really resented that. Yeah. Uh, and I was real, I was just so shy. And, and, uh, we get these uh, improvisational scenes going, and, and uh, slowly I sort of came along, I guess. And that was the days of live television. And um, a friend of mine was doing a show called The Frontiers of Faith. You ever heard of that? No. no. I have heard of that treasure hunt thing, though. <laughs> well, that was, that, was, that was because of the treasure girl. Uh, uh, the tr Funches of Faith was a live show on Sunday morning, and uh, this guy was the uh, assistant uh, producer on the show. And he said that they needed some guy to throw through a window. And uh, <laughs> because it was live, uh, and they'd never throw anybody through a window because you wouldn't do that on Frontiers of Faith. No, <laughs> no. But it was a story about a gangster who had, you know, suddenly found, uh, found God right after he threw the guy out about 12 stories. <laughs> and and uh, they said, uh, where are we gonna find a guy? And I said, how much do you get for that? And they said, 150 bucks. And I said, hey, I'm your man. Yeah. And uh, so I came down and, but because it was live, you had to play the part of the guy, you know, say a few lines, mm -hmm. you know, a few lines and then out the window. <laughs> and so uh, I came in and I was too dumb to be scared. And I, I, I did the part and they threw me out the window and got the 150 had my card, my after card. Mm -hmm. And as those things happened, this guy went right from there to craft theater and I went to the craft theater and a lot of other shows. But I was, uh, they always asked for, uh, whenever they wanted to set someone f on fire, you yeah. know, or uh, <laughs> say, we got a stair fall here, about a 70 foot stair fall. I said, get that Reynolds kid. He's <laughs> got the, this kid's got a brain about the size of a pea. <laughs> and, uh, but I was in there, I was really trying to act, you know? Uh -huh. 
And my mom, I used to call her, God bless her, I'd say, uh, I'm on a show next week and you gotta be sure and watch. And she said, uh, how are you gonna die? <laughs> and I'd say, no, no, I'm telling you, I got a really great part. And I had a terrific part. It was one of those scenes, I, in fact, it, 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 I was going right for the Emmy. Mm -hmm. it, looked, it looked big for me. Yeah. And uh, I had, they set me on fire and they threw me out of a window. I land in an alley and they throw water on me and I'm dying. And the chief of uh, the, the fire department comes up to this uh, detective and the detective says, did anybody live? And he says, he did. Now, we rehearsed and I, I, page and a half, you know, good stuff. You know, when you, when you know, at the very end when you go, <laughs> really good stuff. So I, 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 I saw it, I mean, there's no question about it. Uh, an Emmy for sure. So I called mom, she had the whole, I mean, the whole neighborhood came over. And uh, Paul Ford, who started acting very late in life, uh, was rather nervous, because it was live. You remember Paul Ford? Paul Ford from, he was, uh, among other things, he was on Sergeant Bilko, wasn't he? That's it? right, yeah. sweet man, and, and looked a little bit like a frog. You know, he had mm -hmm. a real funny little face. Very likable, nice. Love, yeah. lovely man. Well, he's standing there, and they set me on fire, put the glue on my back, and <laughs> lit me up. <laughs> threw me out the window, crashed down in the alley, doused the water on me. The detective walks up to Paul Ford and says, anybody live? And he looks over at me and says, nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nobody made it. So how much more of this did you take before you, you headed west? Uh, I headed west right soon after that. Mm -hmm. Uh, did you have a, a deal to go out? Did somebody say, uh, you'd be great for the film, come on out, or did you just uh, pack up and go out on your own? I, I tested for a film called, but not for me, with Clark Gable. Mm -hmm. and, this uh, is a huge break for you then, at that time. If you get this part, you're in... Uh, a huge test. A huge test. <laughs> not a break. <laughs> uh, I flew out to uh, California with um, George Maharis, and we were, uh, he and I and another guy tested, and we walked in, and I saw Clark Gable. Wow. I mean, he was gorgeous. Dogs, women, men, everybody looked at this guy and said, <laughs> woof. <laughs> and so we were standing in this big room, and in those days, you watched the other people test. You know, you didn't go out, I guess you could walk outside, but we all watched. And uh, George did his test with uh, Clark, and uh, Gable said, uh, you duck out. And uh, George said, what? He said, you duck out. <laughs> you duck hunt. And, uh, and George said, I'm a New Yorker, you know, I'm a duck hunt, yeah. So I thought to myself, uh, if he asked me that, I'm going to come up with a clever answer and, you know, yeah. I'll be in. See? <laughs> That's the way my mind worked at the age of 22. <laughs> so uh, I went up to test next. Me meanwhile, the guy that was sitting next to me was so good looking. I mean, it was real scary. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I wanted to, you know, hit him in the face with a monkey wrench or something. <laughs> but I got up, and I'm standing next to Mr. Gable, who was really something. And uh, he said, well, you know, we said four minutes of conversation. He said, right on cue, you duck hunt? <laughs> and I said, I can't shoot anything since I saw Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Mr. Gable went, So, <laughs> we did that scene, I came back, and the other guy went up, and he said to this other guy, Mr. Gorgeous, you duck out? <laughs> and this guy says, I got it over and under. I, uh, it's, I don't know what, it's Smith & Wesson, I think. I like to shoot uh, duck and geese, mostly, but I usually get doubles. And I told, turned to George and I said, George, we are on our way back to New York. <laughs> and that guy got the part, yeah. and that guy today, is Mr. Goodwrench. <laughs> <laughs> Which is all right. Because he's, he's still gorgeous. Yeah, and still, and the work, but do you suppose he ever actually went duck hunting with this guy? Oh, sure. Yeah. I wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess. I would have, sure. listen, man, I would have dug for whatever he said he dug for. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then and then about that time, I decided that I would make my move out to California. Yeah. So you stayed out there. What year was this? Do you remember offhand? I, I, yeah, I went out in, in 57 or 58, and I sort of bounced around and I didn't do too well. 
but I met a, uh, a little starlet. Yeah, now that's what I was going to ask you about. Do you, do you remember your first, uh, I don't know how to put this exactly, <laughs> but, but you're, you're, you're out there and you're, you're dating. My first uh, actual physical encounter with a, a starlet. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. <laughs> now, is this, is this a starlet or a movie star? There's this a difference, isn't there? This girl was a, well, yeah, there is. Now, there give, is. give us the breakdown. Movie star, starlet, what, what, how does that work? What? Well, I'll give you the breakdown. All right. <laughs> the movie, movie star is star Duck Hunt, is I Elizabeth guess. Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Elizabeth Taylor is a movie star. Yeah. A starlet is, if one bad performance, she's on her way to Pomona. Uh -huh. That's a starlet. You know what I mean? oh, yeah. But she's real pretty and, you know, very visible and uh, built like, you know, yeah. the Trump Tower. And, <laughs> and on her way, hopefully, if everything goes everything right. Everything goes right. A, okay. But she, everybody knew this girl because she had a, uh, uh, a T-bird uh, decorated with chicken feathers. Oh, that's nice. She had kind of a low, low, <laughs> low key profile, this girl. <laughs> anyway, I went out with her, and everybody knew her, and everybody in, in, who I knew in college knew her. And I went out with her, and I, uh, uh, I got lucky, you know? <laughs> As the saying goes. Yeah. And I remember driving home. And I've often wondered if, if, if people do this today when they, you know, I mean, if some young lady and I were to, you know, have a, a lingering kiss, you yeah. know? <laughs> I stopped at a red light. I'm just going to say one bad word, but it's not a real bad word. I said, I'm a movie star! <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll be right back after station identification. I thought that was thoughtful of you to warn Later in this program, Herbie Hancock will be here. Also, um, tomorrow, actress Mary Lou Henner. You know Mary Lou Henner. You were in a film with her. Two films. Oh, yes, three films. Two yes. films. Yes. She's a very nice woman. She's a sensational woman. And I might add, the best smelling guest we've ever had. I noticed that, too. She is, smells unbelievable. Uh, also, tomorrow, uh, we have this man on because Mary Lou asked for him. Uh, Kmar, the magician. That'll be tomorrow. Oh. Kmar, the magician, that's tomorrow. I wonder what the connection is there. Well, they, I think they're working together now. Oh. <laughs> uh, now, tell me about, well, speaking of working, tell me about working with uh, Clint Eastwood. Now, what is this like? Is this fun? Is he tough? Is he, is he nasty, a nice guy? Is, can you joke around with this guy? He's a barrel of laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> I tell you. No, I've known Clint for 25 years. And uh, we were fired the very same day from Universal, 25 years ago. Fired from, from what and how? How did from they? The, from the studio. They called us both in this office, and this guy said to Clint, Your Adam's apple sticks out way too far, mm -hmm. and you've got a chipped tooth, you've got little squinty eyes, and you talk too slow. And I said, What's the matter with me? And he said, You can't act. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> Yeah. They've been telling me and telling me, and I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, we, uh, we got up and we walked down the street, which was a long street at uh, Universal, and Clint, who only says about 25 words a year anyway, mm -hmm. uh, didn't, didn't say anything. And I said, Clint, you're in big trouble. He said, why is that? I said, because... I can learn how to act, but you're never going to get rid of that damn Adam's act. <laughs> anyway, he went on to, to make uh, Mini Mill and come back uh, at Universal, and that guy who fired us is now spinning in a grave somewhere. Yeah. Uh, he, he was just terrific to me. He was, I, I adored him before I did the film, but now after working with him, I like him even more. Before we started to do the film, I said, let's do a film where we don't say one you know, bad word, no four-letter words, and, and, and he said, great, and so we did. Yeah. The whole well, picture No, i got to clarify something, because I saw the film, and there are a couple in there. But never the S word or the or, F word. Or the word you said earlier tonight on, yes. on the show. Yes, but you and I didn't have an agreement before the right. show. Right, that's right. We... <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> and the picture, the picture would have a G rating, except for the fact that Clint kills and maims and strangles 147 people. <laughs> And it really was fun to make. It was the, the yeah. most fun I've had ever making a picture. And, and he's such a s sweet guy. Yeah. I mean, I just, uh, I just love the guy. It's a, you know, it's a, it has a good look to the film. It's a very nice, it's a, it's a, a period. They call these period pieces, don't they? Period pieces. Yeah, but it, it has a, you, you successfully captured the flavor of, of the period. Yes, the 1920s, uh, 20s. and, and yeah. the jazz period, which I, I love anyway. That's why I love the fact you got Herbie Hancock. And I mean, I'm a jazz freak. Also, I like uh, cars with feathers on them. <laughs> but, uh, uh, now, this woman, by just for a second, this woman now, you the, get the starlet. Back. The starlet. She, did she go on to be a star, a yeah. movie star? Yeah. Now, what was her name? Yeah. I, I can't, I can't what would give us a give us a picture that she was in that we you know maybe no, two or because, three women in that we you no, know because I hate guys that do that. I, there's nothing more slimy. I hate I hate those kind of books that come out and say I went to bed with the. Warren Beatty, and he gets a 10, and, you know, I, I hate that kind of yeah, stuff. I mean, yeah. if, a guy, if, if a woman or a man give themselves to each other in a loving way, in a nice way, I think that that's something very... Well, it sounds like it was a loving, uh, a loving it was, relationship. It was. <laughs> based, it was. On, based on you on Cahuenga Avenue <laughs> screaming. Well, I, uh, when, it, when at the time, I thought I was in ecstasy. Yeah. So it was. And it was a loving way. Give but, us a little hint. I know it stinks. I know it's ugly. Give us a little hint. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you a little hint. All right. She was in a movie that had a lot of underwater sequences. I know who this is. I know I have it. I have it. I know. OK, that's good. That's uh, helpful information. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. You can go back to your home now and no further questioning. It's we have... not John Hall. Uh, this is exciting, though. Huh? I'm excited about that. You'll be calling me from time to time just to check just if updates. you're right? Yeah, updates. <laughs> sure. City Heat. Well, I'm sure that'll do very well for, for both you and uh, Mr. Eastwood. Thank you. You guys own part of that, don't you? I saw the credits. It was you and you and him have something you own in okay. addition to... <laughs> we produced it. The yeah. two of us produced yeah. it. Yeah. That means huge... Show business dollars yeah. for you and <laughs> No, it means that... Uh, you have a restaurant. You also have a restaurant. I have a restaurant. That's true. But uh, the deal was structured in such a way that I don't, I don't get quite as much as Clint. Yeah. No. No. Let me ask you. We're running out of time. Let me just ask you one thing about this restaurant, because a lot of time guys will sell their name to a restaurant, and they open it up, and they don't know anything about it. Really? We have a menu. Where is your restaurant? My restaurant is in Fort Lauderdale. It's, it's in the most beautiful spot. Burton Jacks. Burton Jacks. Here's a menu, a current menu. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about the menu. <laughs> what the appetizers? Huh? Appetizers. Appetizers. What well, does you these... know you're going to have some stuff out of the sea. All right. Let me know. Let me ask you the. Let me ask you. <laughs> let me ask you the. Uh, let me ask you the price of the stuffed jumbo clam. Sometimes we like to lower that price right down <laughs> to the bottom, and then sometimes we like to jack that baby right up <laughs> on the weekend. So but I would guess depends it would on be you're... somewhere between $6 and $2. That's right. It's just dead center. Hey. $3.95 can't, can't, for can't the we quit now? Clam. Let's try just one more. Oh. What? Uh, desserts? I don't see desserts on here. No. Okay, nah. Let me, uh, one more. <laughs> one more here. Fresh vegetables. The category is fresh vegetables, Bert, for 50. Uh huh. Sauteed mushrooms. Uh, you've never eaten this in your life. Sauteed mushrooms and pea pods. I haven't ever eaten them. <laughs> uh, but uh, isn't it interesting that they, they, they serve it separately, right? And it has yeah, a price all its own. It comes, that's right. <laughs> well, I, I, you get a little portion of peas and sauteed pea pods, onions. Sauteed mushrooms. Pea pods. I would say somewhere between the price of $4 and something else. <laughs>
I would say four dollars or over. Oh, Bert, this is a bargain. Ladies and gentlemen, when you a go down there. A dollar and a half. No, no. <laughs> what Here, here's what you load up on, these sautéed mushrooms and pea pods. Son of a gun. Put them in your pocket, two seventy-five. <laughs> Bert, thank you very much for your time. Thank nice you. to meet you. Come thank back you. anytime. We'll be right back with Herbie Hancock, folks.